All right, you guys. We're in this video. We're going to talk about mulling again. I'm going to show you a, a very good example of how this stuff grows when when it's been in a place where it's really fertile. And we all know that this stuff will grow just about anywhere, dry land or you know on the sides of the roads and stuff like that. This right here, you guys, is on the edge of a power line. The uh, the leaves on this plant are over almost two feet long. See that right there? This plant, you guys, is almost eight feet tall. And you can see a whole patch of it right in there behind me. And we're gonna go up there right above this where I can get a, a shoot some good video of it. And we'll talk some more about this very valuable medicinal plant here. I'm, I'm going to say this patch right here, guys, is more than two acres large of nothing but mostly mullein. You can see it all the way around me. You can see the flowers growing on it. This is just a very good place to get mullein at this particular time. So, guys, this has all uh, kinds of different uses. And uh, I'm just going to read you something I'm seeing right here online about this one. Because I've never used it for anything except uh, uh, chest colds and stuff like that. But let's see what the Native Americans used this stuff for. They poultice the powdered root and apply them to sores and rashes and skin infections. An infusion of the root is also used to treat athlete's foot. Hmm, never heard about that. Like I said, uh, I heard where somebody used the, the, the root, you guys, as a tea for chronic back pain and said it worked really good. Like I said, I've never, I've never tried it for that, so I don't really know. Now, they say you need to filter out these fine hairs, guys, that's on the plant. And you can do that, or you, but I've never had a problem with just eating the stuff raw. They also used it to treat warts, carbuncles, and boils, hemorrhoids. It's also a bactericide. And you get that from the flowers. And, of course, respiratory infections, which is what I use it for mostly. And the uh, croup. But you can also use it for sunburn and other skin irritations. So this plant right here that you're looking at in this video, you guys, is mullein, and it is very, very useful. So you can plant this stuff, of course. As you can see, it's an invasive plant. But... It's got many, many, many uses. Toilet paper, for one. You can put it in your shoes in the wintertime. You guys, if you've got any of this plant saved, you can put it in your shoes as an insulation against the cold. That's what the Indians used to do. They'd uh, slip that stuff inside their moccasins to help keep their feet warm. Different things like that. But anyway, guys, that's another look at mullein. This place is literally eat up, you guys, with honeybees and bumblebees. You can hear them buzzing around there. Jack-o'-lantern mushroom, you guys. That one right there is toxic. It grows in really little gobby bunches, and it, it'll have it'll be it'll be really red when it's first when it first comes up. But that right there is jack-o'-lantern mushroom. Don't make a mistake and think it's something else. I did that one time, you guys. I think I told you I took some of it home. I almost ate some of that right there. But my buddy Darren Hull from New and Old Survival, he gave me a really good lesson, you guys, on mushrooms last year. So you need to be watching my buddy Darren Hull from New and Old Survival. All right, you guys, check this out right here. <clears throat> For all you mountain folks who, who know what ginseng is, does that look like ginseng to you? Now, a lot, a lot of you don't know this, and you've never probably never paid attention to the fact that Fool's Saying, guys, has a, has a seed pod that comes up off of it, but it comes up from the root of the plant. And it has three different stems on it. This right here is Zarsparella, guys. And you can use this for food, but if this were a ginseng plant... These berries 
you guys would be red and they would be sticking up right out of the center of this plant right here just like that right there this is why fool sang guys gets called fool sang wild zarsparella also you guys this morning i'd like to give a big shout out to my friend from spirit of the outdoors if you do not watch Spirit of the Outdoors, you need to go check his channel out. This fella, guys, does some awesome videos, hunting, fishing, skinning, tanning, working on guns, making knives, and all kind of stuff. Uh, go check his channel out and tell him how I sent you along, you guys. Sub him if you like him. But Spirit of the Outdoors is just one awesome young man, and I think is going to become one of the biggest YouTube stars in, in the... That right there, you guys, is Monarch Milkweed. Mm. Check out your leaves. Right in the center of that thing, you guys, you can see, you can see that little black pot in there. That's actually Queen Annie's lace. There's just some heel all you guys. Mint family. And of course, good old plantain, you guys. Check that out right there. Plantain, make it into oils and salves. You can eat the stuff, bug bites, you name it, you guys. This stuff right here is really good for your skin, skin irritations, uh, just all different types of uses, you guys, for plantain. Grows everywhere. And, of course, colt's foot. Colt's foot salt, that's what you make it out of, guys, right there. Or you can smoke the leaves if you want to, or you can cook them and eat them green. Colt's foot is good for all kind of different ailments. Curly dock. Yellow dock. Good for your blood, you guys, for making uh, you absorb your iron better. Pokeweed, you guys. Poke salad ante. Common yarrow. Squirrel's tail. I drink this tea, you guys, to make me sweat if I think I'm going to get a cold. Or I do have a cold, or the flu. Which, by the way, I haven't had you guys in over 15 years. There's some wild lettuce growing up here on top of this mountain, you guys. Elderberries. This stuff right here, guys, is an anti-flu little fruit. Just get that stuff, you guys, mix it with some good old honey and store that stuff all winter long and just take you a dose of it and it will knock the flu. Mountain mint. Pretty stuff. All right, you guys, what we're going through here is my old trap line that I used to trap on 40 years ago. I had about two and a half miles worth of trap line that ran through here. This is the state of Virginia. This is the state of West Virginia. We're right on top of East River Mountain, right on the borderline. Matter of fact, I'll take you out there and show you a tree that I sawed a hole in you guys over 40 years ago. Now that old hollow white oak tree you guys was hollow 40 years ago. I cut a square hole with a chainsaw in this tree. You see the bottom of it still looks like it's square. It, but that tree has tried to heal itself around that cut and it's turned out to be round. The second guys gray fox ever caught my life, I caught right over here beside of this tree in the steel trap, right right over there. And by the way, you guys, while I'm giving shout outs today, my buddy Uncle Sasquatch, who I've been watching now for since I've been on YouTube, has changed the part of his channel name to Uncle Sasquatch Outdoors. He does a lot of nice uh, gun videos, you guys. Make sure you check his channel out and tell him I sent you along. And of course, my old buddy Lewis Nave, you guys from West Virginia, the West Virginia Outdoorsman. If you guys aren't checking out his channel, you are missing some awesome videos. Uh, him and his wife go all over the United States on uh, camping trips. And his videos, you guys, are just, uh, they're just awesome, that's all I can say. So check out the West Virginia Outdoorsman's channel. All right, you guys, right out here in the mountains, one of the most nutritious plants on the planet, perlisane. 
And right there it is. You see the high rocks there, guys? Now I'm down here on the West Virginia side of the mountain. I've hunted squirrels and coons and everything else, guys, on them rocks right there. When I was growing up, this is where I learned to hunt. Hung out there plenty of times when I was a young fella with my 22 rifle. Sit there and watch for squirrels. Up there, you guys, my dad, John Carr Reed Sr., was known as the wood chopper in the old days during CB radio days. He had his CB radio antenna right on top of the mountain right there, so he could talk to people all over the country. Bear corn, you guys. Ready? Place brings back a whole lot of memories, you guys. I'll take you right over under that overhang there just in a second. But did you know these mountains are full of groundhogs? They used to sit right over there on top of those cliffs, you guys, and kill groundhogs right there in that rock pile right down there. Take them home, skin them out, and eat them. Now, guys, this overhang right here that I'm under right now has some really special memories to me. <laughs> Wasn't really special to my mom and dad, but I used to skip school and come to this overhang right here, you guys, and stay under it all day long or just goof off around through the mountains right here until it was time for the school bus to come. Then I would go and act like I just got off the school bus. So I used to camp under, I have camped out, guys, under this rock right here many times. And I can still see some of the places over there where the bears and stuff has been digging into the place where I used to build my campfire. So this overhang right here has some really special memories. I'll, I'm going to take you over here just in a second and show you one that will, will, will really surprise you to know something that happened right there at that particular location. Now you guys, you can see the upper rock up there. That's about, I'd say about 45, maybe 50 feet high from right for where I'm standing down here. When I was around, I think about 15 years old, guys, I tried to jump from that rock right there, that high one, down to this lower ledge right here, which would seem like that would be a very easy thing to do. When I was a kid, Guys, and even as an adult, I climbed everything you see around here. But guys, I bounced off of that ledge and fell all the way to these rocks down here. And I landed on my knees. And I messed my left knee up, you guys, until I couldn't walk. So I had to crawl up out of here over the path that goes up around those rocks, which I could have walked down, and crawl all the way to the house which is about a quarter of a mile down on the other side of the mountain. Now, obviously, guys, if I'd have landed on my back, my head, or anything else, I would have probably killed myself. But the good Lord watches over his people. Even before you're his people, and you, you don't even know you're his people, he's watching over you. So, you know, we as youngsters and even as grown-ups do some really stupid stuff. And I was, I was telling my son about this uh, this weekend because he was in to visit me, and that brought back his memory. And I wanted to come back here and just look at that place right there, and thank God that he was there, even though I was really stupid and young. So, well, guys, right here's something that I will never forget. Back when I first started going to church, after I really got saved back there in the nineteen, the late nineteen seventies, early nineteen eighties. I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and, I, and I, I wanted it so bad, guys, that food or anything else just didn't have any in, interest in me. Well, one snowy night in December, guys, I was at that little old church that Life 8 Terry had out there on the, on the Country Girl Road, and I remember that night, I, I ran to the altar, guys, I fell on my face before God, I started crying out, and I did receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and uh, spoke in tongues and still speak in tongues. I'm not going to speak in tongues right here because I really don't need to. Uh, if I'm teaching you something, guys, I don't need to be speaking in tongues. But right out there, I'll take you out there and show you just in a second, was where we, me and my wife lived in an old house with no running water, no inside plumbing, no toilet, no nothing. So the, that night when I got back, I had stopped speaking in tongues. Well, I couldn't stand it. 
So I come outside in the pitch dark, you guys, snow on the ground, everything else. I walked out the pass from the old Johnny house right there, and I came up here, and I remember, guys, jumping up on this rock and starting to pray again. Just as soon as I started praying, I started speaking in tongues. That's why I call this the Holy Ghost Rock. Great memories, you guys. The, the power of God is real, I'm telling you guys. Don't let nobody kid your uh, right, uh, rewrite the Bible for you. The Bible is real and it is right. There's the old Johnny house, what's left of it, you guys. When we came to Virginia, you guys, this is where we lived. Right here. In this old house. Had four rooms in it. No running water. We gardened us out of the mountain right up here. That's where the garden was. You can see right there where Dad had a, a little thing for, I think, a, one of his dogs. It was an old truck I used to own, you guys. I took the bed off of it and made a flat bed out of it. And there's an old foot valve out of the well that I started to put uh, put uh, water in the house with. I remember that right there. There's how you got your water from from our place, you guys. 120 turns to the water. Really good water, by the way. The old station wagon. Brings back a lot of memories. Dad used to keep uh, hog feed in that old uh, Coca-Cola cooler right there. And last but not least, you guys, Mommy's old, one of her old wash machines. And my dad liked to collect those insulators right there. guys that's about it for this particular video right here uh, I like to see somebody else do one of these videos guys and take us through your past and uh, show us some things that uh, you used to do when you was young I really enjoy learning the history of people I don't know about you anyway thanks for watching you guys and once again God bless you till next time have a great day